is uh, 6.15, pretty close to it, uh, on July 10th on a rainy day. And we posted this uh, meeting in three public places and on the website and emailed interested parties, correct? So we can move forth with this um, select board meeting of the town of Rochester. And I'm going to start off with the um, minutes from the prior meeting of June 26, which I was able to join via Zoom. So I can um, look through these and I, they look good to me. And you guys have any corrections on these? I do not. No, then I move to approve. I second. All in favor? That. Okay, that goes. And we also have a set of minutes from the special meeting on 7 7, in which we set the um, approve and set the tax rate for fiscal year 24. And that looks good to me. I would move to approve those minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, got those two. <clears throat> and we have. Um, this is kind of apropos with the um, the rain, which um, we're looking for a uh, um, signature on the better Rose Grant culvert replacement for Rogers Brook and Buffalo Mountain Road. And I would um, occur just to go ahead and approve that one. Any culvert we can replace? We should. I second that. Yep. Going to sign that. And we also need a signature for the amendment one on the West Hill Bridge geotechnical investigation. What exactly is the geotechnical <laughs> investigation? It was extra, they needed extra funds to finish. In the very beginning, they were, they hit ledge or something. Like right. It, and they needed extra funds to, to finish that test. And so it was done back when Joe was here, but um, he didn't have the paperwork completed. So he finally got to that part of this job and sent it along so that he could have a signed copy. And then of as it. the client, we need to authorize that. So I would move to. Um, oh, who is the person saying this to? Yeah. That's Jason. Okay. VHP. And how much is it? Total. Well, the, the um the total of the cost is sixty five thousand dollars, but I think that is it was uh, part of that first. Part it, of that. Part of it was part of the it design. Was back, this is right. the paperwork that's following yeah. up that. Yeah. So yeah. that was all set. I would move to authorize. Second. All in favor. All right. Aye. That was already done before you went there. Jason just didn't get it. Right. Okay, and then uh, next on the agenda, we've Got, I think this was requested by you, Robert Franks, if you're there, about the Two Rivers Adequichi discussion regarding public infrastructure grants versus personal real estate. You want to elaborate, elaborate on what your concerns are? Yeah, uh, this is Robert Franks. Uh, it looks like I'm muted. Um, your computer's muted, but we can hear you on your phone, but it's a little echoey. Yeah, you're, you're echoing. <laughs> Kristen, that, that, was, that was fabulous. So um, with regards to the, the town's concerns today, uh, D. Mandel is in major pain, and uh, I called forth to Chris Bump, and a number of other people to help him. But that that is a sidebar. So I want to go forward with regards to Two Rivers out of Quichi 
uh, grants, uh, public infrastructure, and personal real estate. And I'm going to put forth the question. In all the state secretary documents, June Hendricks, Hendricks, is represented by his name, Leslie. Why in God's world is he signing yeas and nays and putting forth his name, Dune? That, that's improper. So I have many nicknames in the town of Rochester. Uh, there's probably 12 of them, but in, in a legal and public manner, uh, my name is signatured with Robert John Franks. So I don't understand this. And moving forward, I want to know, uh, the, the grants that were put forth with regards to the quote unquote stable in what what are the numbers and are the taxpayers paying for that so i reached out to uh, two rivers out of quichi the state of vermont and i cannot find any uh, uh responsibility to uh personal real estate uh, uh, promotions or whatever. But it's a gigantic question. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very simply reaching out to the town of Rochester. And, you know, it's okay. I just want to know the dynamics of the of the numbers. Are there taxpayer numbers? Are they federal numbers? Are they documents su- su- uh, supported by what has been put forth to the Secretary of State's office? What is, where are the numbers coming from? I don't see that as a question to pose to the select board. Um, the select board did did not apply for any any specific grants for any business renovations it's in our private, town. Private business, sure. So I, I we have we're not privy to that information, nor should we be. I think I think you and the uh, select board need to look into this because I don't know how uh, Two Rivers Out of Quiji funds the, the high school and all the goodness they're doing and where the money comes from because we are inundated with over property taxes supporting the school and everyone just sits back and just says, oh, it's all good. Okay, I guess um, you're asking us to look into something about where does Two Rivers get their funding from? Is well, it's not just question? where they get their funding. Whoa, 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 wait, a Patty. I think yes, it would be more proper for Dune to uh, address this situation. Not you. I am the representative to Two Rivers right now, so it would be appropriate for me to look into it. I think that's a question for Two Rivers. It's not really a question for this board. But if you're asking if um, any money came from Two Rivers to contribute to my personal projects there is no money came from two rivers to contribute to those in fact i don't know if we even got much advice from two rivers 
They are the regional planning commission and they are in, in, entrusted with overseeing the brownfield development program. So that's, I think, a big part of how they've gotten involved with the school project because any um, umbrella brownfield money is, is administered through them. Um, but um, in terms of you're insinuating that I'm um, having taxpayers pay for my personal projects, there's um, I'd like to see any any evidence you have of that because I sure don't know of any. Well, I think the 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 town should go forth to the secretary of state's office the documents that are signed by a, a gentleman named Leslie Hendricks or Hendricks, but not signed but, uh, by the, the positions. <laughs> I think it's... I don't see where the select board has any jurisdiction over this. No, yeah, nor, nor do we care. And, and no, it's no. really, it's a personal issue for for uh, uh, Leslie, if that's the way you want to address him, that's fine. Uh, we all know him as Doom, so, but Frank. if you feel Leslie is the right oh. word, that's fine with me. But we don't have any jurisdiction over who gets the grants or who's awarded the grants. They're out there for any business that comes in and wants to enhance a downtown, they're available through the state. Two Rivers basically steers you in a direction and the homeowner or the business owner needs to fill out the grants and dot their I's and cross their T's and do everything there's involved in getting that grant awarded to them. And there's always a financial catch with these grants. It's not just the total package isn't free, it's there's money involved that has to come from the person that's getting the grant. It's just like our towns. When we get a grant for like 50,000, there's a match portion of that that we have to pay. And it usually comes out of our budget. We try to put that in our budget so that we can get that extra money to help address the issue that we're trying to address in the, in the budget or the road project that we're doing. And it's, it's there through the state and through federal agencies that supply these grants. And that's the only way that towns ex can exist with the kinds of costs that are associated with any projects going forward. Now, on a business point of view, the zoning has always encouraged the development of communities to stay within the community itself. In other words, our village zone has always been zoned so that you want to keep the center as vibrant as possible. So with Mr. Hendricks doing what he's, he did, it was a good thing for the community that we didn't back it at all. It, it was all through this grants, but his it, foresight to do this was to improve the community and his area of town. And it's a bonus, it's a bonus to the community to have someone that, with a business sense that wants to address that issue and bring it forward. It's no different than the hardware, the, the cafe or any other business that wants to enhance it. Now, they're not all eligible for grants. I'm sure uh, Leslie and Annie had issues when they went to address these grants. I'm sure they didn't get every grant that they wrote and spent time getting. And there's not, there's a lot of work involved in doing that. And I take my hat off to them. The, the government supplies every individual that wants to do something that has the right amount of tools and, and the time to do it to fill out these grants and see if they can get an award. So, you know, I, I don't know why you think it's a selectman issue because it isn't. It's a personal issue, and if that's what you're driving at to make it a personal issue, then you're, you're in the wrong forum here. Well, I think, Frank, uh, your, your conversation there or dialogue was very proper. Not that I'm calling this word uh, chairperson. 
guilty, but I'm very concerned that uh, where this is remaining. I think what you forward forward by Dune or Leslie, not uh, Surrogate. We're kind of having trouble hearing you, Robert. Now we're having a lot of trouble hearing you. Um, Robert, maybe you want to hang up your phone and then unmute your computer, perhaps? Yeah. Okay, hold on. He just hung up his phone. And then... There you go. Okay. Try that, Robert. Thank you, Kristen. Listen, yep. I, I, I don't I don't mean to go forth in in uh aggravation or anything. It's just a call forward to to support the people of of Rochester. And uh if we have to depend on two rivers out of Quichi, that has been very very helpful with the the redevelopment of the school and everything that's going on but personal property using two rivers out of Quichi grants is i i i believe it's not proper I, did you did you not hear that um have received no money from two rivers out of Quichi? and and any any grants we did get a facade improvement grant from the department of environmental you know it wasn't environmental economic de development there are grants out there they're no way connected with the town so if you have problems with the vermont department of economic development offering grants that's something to bring up with them but nothing that the select board here has got any control over, but no money is coming out of town pockets to take care of my business. So uh, I think that's enough said on the subject. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I don't see what more there is to say. Thank you, though. Thank you for your opinion. Okay. Um, the next thing on our list was minutes and more generally regarding slavery in Vermont. Yep, and that was a guest, and they're not here. Okay. Yeah, hi. Thanks for having us on again. And um, I they're on the phone. Have, sorry. A few comments. Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry, Bruce. I didn't think that you were here. I didn't realize oh. that was your phone number. Oh, okay. Thanks. You're all Thanks set. Thanks for having us on. Um, I think we tried to clarify some things. Um, because I think it's important that the town select board hear certain things that have been going on and um, with the letters and, and notifications. Uh, so I think all we have is a few comments concerning maybe the minutes and some clarifications in that manner, which sort of uh, summarizes maybe what we've, we've said. So Janine, do you want to speak? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, so, um, I, yeah, thanks, like Bruce said, for um, listening. And in terms of the proposed minutes, we wanted to go over a few things. Um, we did send, um, through Julie, we sent Julie something amended because when we had sent the last notice document to Julie and then we sent a copy to the town, as you recall, the town officials. So we had the exhibits mixed up and we apologized for that. So we realized our mistake. Um, and we've just been dealing with, um, sleep loss for too many years and too much work and illness. So... We fixed that, and um, so Julie probably got that through priority mail already. If not, it'll be coming soon, um, an amended copy 
of that, which was filed on the docket. So in terms of the minutes, um, I'm just going to read a letter that we're going to send to you. I've just been really sick with Lyme, so I haven't, we haven't been able to get this to you yet. But um, just for stating, um, no judgment or anger about this, just for clarification and communication, um, that the synopsis with the proposed minutes is unclear in certain specific ways. Um, because above all, it misses clarification, the main and most critical points we made at the 626 select board meeting, um, which were number one, these are the most critical main points. Um, number one, we stated the town has been egregiously brutal and dishonest toward us regarding the situation with Lyman Hill Inc.'s plat map, meaning the plat site plan of 2003 and also the claimed um, corrective, quote unquote, corrective plat of 2019. And we stated the town has not been honest and has not done their job, that it's time for the town to finally do their job. We stated that ethics and an honest reckoning needs to be honored herein. So we stated on June 26th what we have numerous times stated before to the town, both verbally and in writing. Um, and when I say to the town, I mean to the Planning Commission and you know now obviously to the select board. Um, uh, so that the zoning administrator do needs to send a notice of violation that Lyman Hill Inc. Lyman Hall Incorporated stating that their plat map violates both local bylaws and laws state of Vermont and that Lyman Hall Inc. must remove it from land records. So that's regarding both the 2003 plat um, slash site plan and also the 2019 corrective plat, which needs to, um, once it's removed um, from the shelves, it needs to be held in trust as we stated. Um, uh, to by the town, the town clerk to Lee Smith needs to hold that um, until you know the Constitutional Court of Record resolves the issue of the Lyman Hulling plat map. So just to make really clear, we're not asking the town um, to resolve the issue of what happens with the Lyman Hulling plat map. That is completely an issue within the realm of the Constitutional Court of Record. So number two. Again, clarifying um, what we stated and want to make really clear uh, regarding the 626 select board meeting. On 626, we asked for the town to support both zoning administrator Dune and town clerk Tooley to do their jobs and to stay within the realm and role of their job descriptions and responsibilities. Meaning for a notice of violation to be sent to Lyman Hill Inc., as we already said, and for the illegal void Quorum Hunt Judas Judgment Order of June 6, 2023 to not be recorded in the Rochester land records, um, which is a void judgment order regarding which we stated on 626, 2023, are financial instruments, illegal financial instruments in land records, which violate law, state of Vermont for fire safety, local bylaws, at all, yeah. So, um, and of course, when we say illegal financial instruments, we're referring to the two Lyman Hulling plat maps of 2003 and the corrective one of 2019. So, um, so we also want to clarify that it's timestamp because we're going to be sending you this letter, which has an exhibit of um, a transcript of the 626 select board meeting um, tape. So you'll have that for reference. So um, we clarify that at timestamp 4956 to 5003 on the transcript. Um, Pat Harvey stated as Bruce and I had begun to transition out of the meeting room, she said, when we confer with counsel and they define Julian Dune's job, that will take place, end quote. So we make really, really clear now that Dune, the zoning administrator's jo job, and Julie, the town clerk's job, are defined by statute, by case law, by Vermont standards set by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, by standards which town officials and town employees are held to in Vermont, et cetera. In a situation where in town officials, only power is conferred to them by the state. Um, we remind you that Vermont is a Dillon's rule state um, and that power from the state itself is derived from and is an expression of those of the people of Vermont whom town officials and employees serve. Um, so we note that, the, again, the Constitutional Court of Record has clearly defined Julie Smith, the town clerk's job in the notice documents given to Julie, um, including the amended one that was, um, if she hasn't gotten it yet, she'll be getting it soon, 
Um, it's basically the same thing. It's the same thing. It just has the exhibits corrected. Um, and this is and remains the law of the case. So um, in terms of that, the town can think whatever they think about this with the court of Re constitutional court of record. That's fine. The town can think what they like. We're simply saying that's the town's business, what they think. That's up to that, the town. Yeah, we're simply stating what is and that the law must be followed, um, which means that the zoning administrator, Dune, and the town clerk, Julie, um, need to do their jobs as their jobs are actually defined Jeanette, for actual I, protection law. Jeanette, Jeanette, can I interrupt here? Could I, could I just finish? Just, just one uh, second. As long as you're saying something more. different, as long as you're saying something new, because you're saying the same thing several times now. Uh-huh. So um, what, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Bruce, Bruce, you need to be calm. Well, what's wrong with that is we're trying to get to some clarity. and um, Okay, and, just read the documents. Uh, That's all you need to do. Read the documents. Well, You'll okay. find out what the clarity okay. is. Okay, thank you very well, much. The, um, hey, and, um, let him speak first. Can hang up? Uh, nope, they're Hello? still there. No, okay. we're right. here. So in, in, in a search for clarity about these documents, um, we did I'm having a hard time hearing you, June. Can you repeat that? I said, in our search for clarities around these documents that you have submitted to us, we submitted uh -huh. them to our town legal counsel, and um, he has had trouble finding any legal validity to your arguments. And if you're Look, asking, June, that's, that's that's okay, there you go. Bruce, Thank you very Bruce, much. Bruce, you need to let me speak. Look, June, whatever, like we said, whatever you think of the documents, hey, that's totally up to you. Town officials can think whatever they want about it. There's that. already been a decision. Bruce, There's Bruce, already Bruce, a judgment Bruce, in the case. Please. There's a valid judgment. Bruce, so Bruce, get the hell Bruce, out of my life. Bruce, you need to stay calm. I'm sorry he's getting upset. We've been through years of eviscerating brutal trauma with this situation with Lyman Hall Incorporated. Um, and seeing neighbors become incredibly abused as well. It's really too much um, for us. We've been, we're in intensive PTSD with this. So all we can say again um, is that the town is free to think whatever the town wants to think. That's totally up to you. Your council can well, we say are, whatever they want. The they town, have no jurisdiction are. and you have Bruce, no jurisdiction. Bruce, Bruce, you Bruce, abdicated Bruce, your Bruce, jurisdiction Bruce, long ago. Thank you very much. Bruce, this is not what we were taught. Look, I'm sorry, Bruce is getting so upset. That's just our message. We wish you well. We wish you all peace. Um, we wish you self-reflection at what actual honesty and ethics are, because we haven't experienced that from the town officials, um, from coming to the planning board all these times in communication with certain town officials. Um, with the court system, we haven't experienced that with Lyman Hall and their legal counsel. It's all about lies. It's lying. Bruce, it's equivocation. Bruce, Bruce, it's changing to calm, Thornton, but not like this. Look, no, we're just saying we are, it's all lies. Um, Bruce, it's you're lies. not helping. Bruce, you're not helping. No, you it's up? about lies. They're liars. No, Bruce, I'm you need to hang up. To, you're not um, helping. I might just have to ask um, Kristen to mute. But not you. treated us very well. Bruce, you need to hang up if you're going to start yelling. It's not helping. It's not. It's not. He's and very traumatized, um, June. You, you have to understand, he's profoundly traumatized. We you want to see the house go down Bruce, right now? Bruce, Bruce, you need to get off the phone. You're not helping. You need mm. to get off the phone. You need to hang up. It's a motherfucking trailer park. Bruce, you're not helping. You know... We, we you need to understand. We're going to say goodbye now. Um, this, um, you know, you're not respecting me, Dune, if you just hang up, because I have not uh, yelled. And you need um, to take this in a little context. That you when tell me when I'm on phone, the phone. Is, is Bruce still on the phone? Yeah, I'm on the phone. Bruce, you need to hang All up right, the phone. Um, you are not. Uh, would not I would like to make the time. No, of course not. We're. we're you, Robert yeah. Franks would like to make a comment. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you go for it, Robert. Public comment. Yeah, we're well, making public comment. The most important thing, Dune, or Leslie, and Patty, and Frank, Kristen, Julie, is that there has to be some compassion moving <laughs> forward. Um, with regards to Dune, 
for to uh, Bruce and uh, Janine's uh, case, you have to address it in a proper manner. You cannot you cannot put this forth into a uh, disposal. You have to address this. It's a very important thing. And uh, he, that's, he, that's, that's, um, whoa, my... whoa, 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 wait a second. Lyman Hall and... Now, be careful that you don't um, put yourself in legal jeopardy by slandering people here, Robert. I don't, uh, Leslie, I, I, oh, legal jeopardy. Well, maybe you should reflect on to that because legal jeopardy is in my conscience and my goodness to support people of Rochester, of Bethel, and so forth. So you can just sit back and I'm, I'm going to ask this request one more time. I'm going to ask that Frank Severy does not laugh at me. Patty Harvey doesn't laugh at me. And you dispose the, the, the concerns and the communication that we're trying to put forth. So Frank can sit back and laugh. You can sit back and laugh. Patty Harvey can sit back and laugh. But I'm, I'm, I'm making this point very clearly that you should not deny the concerns of the public. So, Kristen, uh, I see you there. Uh, Patty's making notes. Dune sitting back. And let's go forward. But most importantly is that I, the only thing in my life is to help people and support people. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not on this meeting to, uh, to reject people or to deny people. I'm here to just support. <laughs> so let's move forward with the meeting and we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have to talk to Yep. Um, there's, is there anyone from Zoom on the library? No, not from the library, but Martha does have a question. Yeah. Um, just just a, a request. Um, I, I think I mentioned it to you already. Um, I was not able to, uh, to, I didn't remember in time to call before this meeting to ask if you could, if I could put my request to have, uh, for the players to have Harvest Fair on the park on September 9th. So could you, I think I mentioned it to Julie, um, but I just want to make sure that the Julie and Kristen would add it to next, the next select board meetings agenda, something for you to approve, please. Yep, Julie added it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, report from the highway, there is no dust anywhere to be found. I did talk with John later today. We've had some minor issues mainly shoulder issues and uh, uh, some culverts, but nothing drastic. And everything's knocked on wood as well, pretty decent. So we're fortunate. Um, he is in the process of mowing roadside. So this rain couldn't have been at a worse time really because we rent the vehicles for right. a couple of weeks yeah. and he's he works Sunday to mow. And, um, so they're doing their due diligence. And another note, they withdrew their uh, request to do the the Riverbrook Bridge or uh, culvert um, because they didn't get any real good bids. Uh, nobody would give them a bid because they were trying to get a bid this year for next year, and nobody wanted to do it. So they're with, withdrawing that request, and they'll throw it out in the spring. So and that's. Uh, Oh, it, uh, Can I did a, John, John did approve the driveway for uh, the folks up on the, the big lot out there. Um, 
Larry Strauss's road. Mm -hmm. The guy bought a chunk of land up on the Bethel Mountain Road and is going to put a driveway up there. We we had tabled that last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, John approved that. And I sent the guy a letter moving that driveway. He wants a 30 foot landing strip there and an 18 inch hole in support of it. And I haven't heard any response. I, I CC Gray Harvey on the note. And um, I'll be meeting with Kristen at some point so we can get the extra 20,000 for the bridge that we need to do. And, and I'm not sure what John's plan is with the <clears throat> Rogers Brook culvert, but it, I know Bethel has some issues with that, their road over there now on the Camp Brook side. So I don't know what's gonna happen there. We may be looking at a road closure for them over there for a bit. We don't know, and maybe John will want to stuff that culvert in this year yeah, while that road's right. closed. So I don't know. We haven't had a chance to talk about that yet, but I'm sure we'll we'll get to it. And we'll see what the uh, uh, Frank, uh, this is yeah. Frank's. Uh, I just want to uh, put forward, please don't laugh at my concern. I, I haven't been laughing at your concerns. Please don't, please don't laugh at my concerns. Uh, and I want to okay. hold on. I want to put kudos, kudos to do Leslie for reaching out to Dean Mandel. He's in serious trouble, and I, con I tried to contact Chris Bump, the V Trans. Uh, stretch to get up there he's evacuating his property this evening so i i'm very sad and i don't believe me i believe me dune leslie frank patty these are not personal uh comments these are public comments so I want to move forward with something to help Dean and Connie down there at, 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 at that bridge that was never repaired uh, during Irene. And Dean and Connie are evacuating. So I... It, I, I did talk to Dean in there. Um, at, at that point, there, the... Um, Brook coming down through their yard had not jumped the bank, but they're not going to sleep there just because they don't want to worry about, about that. So I think it's probably prudent. And I was able to get in touch with Chris Bump and um, alert him to the situation. So we'll see what, what comes from that. Well, uh, Leslie, a uh, dude, uh, I just want to thank you for reaching out to Dune or to Dean to say, hey, we're going to take care of you because it, it's a disaster down there. Well, it's not quite a disaster down there. It's the potential of a disaster down there, but it seems like we might have dodged the bullet and then the rivers seem to be um, going down, but it's not temp fake too much. But thank you for your concern. Um, we most, were, uh, most importantly, it's just Robert Franks. Uh, Martha, you look like you're falling asleep. I'm not falling asleep. I'm coughing. I have asthma, so I'm wheezing occasionally. Pardon me. Well, Martha, if you ever need help, you just dial my number and I'll be there. Thank you, Robert. That's, um, that's a fact. But ooh. going back to... Uh, Leslie's. Or... We're still um, actually talking about um, the highway. Yeah. Um, the um, so you're pretty much um, we're left it off that they're gonna reissue a bid for the um, that culvert. They, they'll put that, they'll put that back out the bid in the spring, and yeah. we'll probably do the same with this fall. Yeah. We'll look yeah. at it that way. I couldn't get it out in time. I couldn't get signatures, and and we couldn't get the signatures to the people that we need to at the Natural Resources Committee. 
revenue work. So we'll put it out next spring. But, um, and they, and same with the river, but it was dry. So is there, um, Terry is not off the No. No. Um, how about Jeff? Nope. Nope. Um, how about any grant updates? Um, nope, you signed that paper and that's all I needed for now. Yep. Um, yeah, was there someone else on? I did want to make you aware that um, it looked like Bruce and Janine were um, in the waiting room again. So I was going to ask for permission to let them in, but they've since hung up. So they're no longer there. Yep. I would well, like, I, if, if it is proper, I would like to put out a message to Nancy Woolley. Um, go for it, Robert. Well, you know, uh, I didn't know that Nancy and Woolley or Nancy and Charles were sailors, but I, I, I find it hard to uh, communicate the things to Nancy that Charles, her dear husband, would so much be uh, involved. You know, it's very hard for me. So Nancy Woolley has been a, a structure, a statue, a wonderful woman. And I never got the, the yeah. chance to, to spend time with Charles. And, you know, it goes back to Ted Turner. It goes back to wonderful, America's Cup races, and Nancy, who is a, a, I don't even know how to explain Nancy Woolley. She is a dear and wonderful person. I and, think we all echo your sentiments and, um, and agree with you. And, um, and um, I don't okay. know if she's on the meeting. Yep, she, she is. is. Hats off to you and Charlie. Mm -hmm. She waved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Robert. I will second the motion. All right. Have a good night. Record.